Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can sell literally anything. My name's Nicholas Bailey and I hated sales. I thought like I just follow the thing of just go get value out there into the world, just keep helping people, keep helping people, and then they'll just make a conscious decision on their own that they'll actually go buy your stuff. And so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure that you do, because I was a broke carpet cleaner, 60 pounds overweight, failing in business, failing in life, and was able to turn it around, and I'm sharing things that you can do to become a three-dimensional businessman, have success without sacrifice. Like I said, just a few years ago, now I think it was four years ago, I remember going to an event and my friend challenged me because I got to share what I did in front of people and he said, Nicholas, how many sales do you want to make? And I was like, I don't want to make any sales. Like, I just want to give value to people. And it was this cop out because I was so afraid of getting rejected. I'd been rejected in the past. I had tried to throw little live events and meetups and things at my house and I kept getting rejected, rejected, rejected. It felt so bad that I thought like, oh, if I just give value and they make a decision, I'm doing my part, but I'm never having to ask anything. And so my definition of sales for you to write down is getting people to do what they already want to do but they would never do if it wasn't for you. So these are people that want to get over a fear, let's say, like if you want to get people over a fear, you have to sell. If you want to hang out with your family, you have to sell. If you're getting married, you have to sell. I remember even getting on a phone call with my mother-in-law and I wanted her and my father-in-law to come out to dinner with my wife and I. So I got on the phone call and I wasn't like, hey, you know, uh, if you guys want, you can go to dinner with us, we're gonna go over there, but if not, no big deal, like no pressure. I didn't just give value, right, of like, hey, like, this is how you go to dinner. Like, I just talk, talk about all these things and then just expect they're going to be like, hey, can we come to dinner with you? Like, I didn't do that either. I got on the phone call and I said, you know, it'd mean the world to us. We're only going to be there for an hour. We're going to be there in 15 minutes. We're going to be leaving out of town here in a few weeks. And I just, I really want to be able to see you guys before we go. Can you guys come to dinner tonight? And she told me, well, let me talk to my husband and, and we'll figure it out. And I said, no, 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 don't talk to your husband. It, are you in if he's in? She's like, yeah, absolutely. It's like, great, just go ahead and go to him and tell him, hey, honey, we're going out to dinner and I'll see you guys there. And I assume clothes and boom, they ended up going there. See, like even hanging out with family, you can use sales. But if you're listening to this video, then I'm assuming that you wanna go out there and sell, whether it's low ticket, high ticket packages and make sure that you bring in more revenue in your life so you can have more freedom, so you can have more power in life, so that you can actually go out there and grow your business and accomplish the things that you want to. Because I'm assuming that your product and service is probably helping the world. So let's jump into it. Number one is you wanna make sure that people are willing and able. I'm not saying that you should go out there and shove things down people's throats and go sell it to people that don't need it and don't want it. And so willing and able looks like this. Do they want the thing? It's so much easier to have people come to you that actually already want what you have because if, if you're selling something in the world, it probably has a market cap, meaning there's people out there that actually already spend money buying something in that industry. And all we need to do is get those dollars into your hands. We don't need to get people to discover this new thing from you that they have no value for. So willing means that they actually want that thing. I'm gonna share with you how you can attract those people. Like You want them to come to you. The second thing is able. Do they have the financial resources to be able to invest in it or can they go find the financial resources, meaning that leveraging business, credit cards, something like that. So willing and able, that's just the foundation. I wanna make sure is those are the people that are quick movers that are the best people to attract inside of your life. So the first thing that I wanna do when I'm on the phone or I'm talking to someone speaking no matter what is I want to establish trust. I wanna establish trust through my content. I wanna establish trust through the reviews. I wanna establish trust and a foundation where they're not putting their wall up. And generally the way to do that is that you be interested in what they're going through. So my mentor, Jay Abraham, gives three steps to be able to sell things. And, and one of the first steps is putting the content out there, speaking about the subject, educating people, and you're going to attract people to you. And so that's the first thing. So he always talked about, we were on an interview together that you could actually watch on the YouTube channel. And he started talking about water. He's like, what if you're selling water? So you start talking about the benefits of water, what water has done for you, the, the vision that you have for water. And there's going to be certain people that are like, man, like I, I want to learn about water, like I wanna buy water, what should I buy? And so the second step is treating people like a client, not like a customer. A customer buys a commodity or a service. They, they just buy it, they have no relationship with the people they bought it from, that's a customer. A client is someone underneath your protection. So if they're underneath your protection, they're interested in the subject or the thing that you sell, the next step isn't to just go, hey, here's all the options, go ahead and buy it. The next step is to truly discover what do they need? What are their goals? 
and what is the best thing possible going forward for them to be able to hit that goal. After you go through that step and you, get, and you believe and they believe that you found the best solution, now it's your job to close as hard as humanly possible to get them to take action on the thing because both of you guys, you as an expert and them as the client, you guys both see that this is the, the place to go to get what they want. Now it's you helping them get that thing. And if that thing's you, then absolutely get them to buy your stuff. So generally when I get on the, the very beginning call or whatever I'm trying to do, like I always want to paint out like where do they actually want to be? And if I'm not actually talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, I want to already know what that thing is. Like where is the place that they want to be? Because people don't buy products, they buy the solution. They buy the place that they actually want to be. My friend Alex Ramosi says people buy the vacation, they don't buy the path to be able to get to the vacation. Like they don't buy, they don't think like, I want to get the airline tickets and I want to get this. They're like, I want to be on the beach. They want to be at the destination. So I always want to feel clear on what that exact thing is. And the way that you can do that is by asking them, hey, if we were to be on a phone call 12 months from now, and let's say you were to take action on the things that you want to take action on or buy this product, what, where would you want your life to be in 12 months? Describe that out to me. And so they'll start telling you like, man, if it's weight loss, like they're gonna be like, well, you know, I wanna be at this weight, I wanna be at this fitness level. So you're at least knowing like where they wanna be, how ambitious they are, all those different things. So if it's money, like they're gonna tell you how much money they wanna make. If it's their relationship, they're gonna, wanna they're gonna tell you where that thing is at. So at least I know and they know where they want to be and they've been vulnerable enough to share that with you because if they're sharing with you where they wanna be, that means they're also not there yet. The second part is I want to figure out how long, and, and you kind of use these as like a script as well, I want to figure out how long have you wanted to hit that goal? Like how long have you been wanting to do that thing? How long have you wanted to have this truck bed on the back of your truck? How long have you wanted to have this car? How long have you wanted to have this camera? How long have you wanted blank? And they'll start telling you, well, I've wanted to have health, I'll use health as an example. I've wanted to lose 60 pounds for 10 years. Like, okay, you've wanted to lose 60 pounds for 10 years. So, so you've been overweight and, you've, and, and what you told me is you want to lose 60 pounds and you want to be 60 pounds down in 12 months and you tell me you've been wanting to do that for, for 10 years. They're like, yeah, like awesome. So how long have you been actually trying to solve this problem? And what I'm actually doing here is inflicting pain. After I figure out where they want to be and of course like I want to like make sure that I open the call correctly, all those things, but th that doesn't matter as much as this because when you attract people and they're already interested, they're just trying to figure out, should I buy from you and will it work for me? And can I use it right now? Like, is this sol the solution to the problem that I have and where I wanna be? And so I'm inflicting pain. The worst pain in the world is chronic pain. Chronic pain is just like, it's like back pain, right? Like people have back pain for their whole life and never do anything about it. Why? Because it's chronic. It's like a four out of 10. It's just enough to nag them all the time for them to complain about it, but it's not enough pain for them to actually take action. So our goal as the quote unquote salesperson or the person selling something is to make sure that we inflict more pain so that they're a 10 out of 10. Notice if someone's in a 10 out of 10 pain, they're gonna go to the hospital, they're gonna pay whatever it takes to get it fixed because it's dire, it's, it's something that they need to do. They don't look at the price tag, they don't look at any of that. So our goal at first is to inflict that pain and some of the way that we do that is by having people see the reality of where they're at and digging into those pain points. So now they know that there's a gap. They know where they want to be. They know how long they've wanted to get there. And now they're starting to see like, oh my goodness, like it's been 10 years and I haven't made progress. So then I would ask, how long have you been actually actively trying to hit that goal? So you may have wanted it for 10 years, but how long have you been actively trying to solve that problem? And they may say, well, for six years. Like, okay, so you want to be 60 pounds down. You've been wanting to do this for 10 years and you've been doing something about it for six years. How has that worked so far? They're like, oh, well, I mean, I, obviously it hasn't worked. Okay, what have you tried? They start telling you about all these things that they tried that didn't work, that aren't the same thing as yours, right? And then you start going down to like, why don't you think that those things worked for you? And then they start telling you like, why all these things didn't work for you? And then I started, I, I like to go into like multiple choice questions sometimes. I'll say something like, hey, like, you know, is it a lack of motivation, a lack of accountability, or is it like a lack of a, a plan? Like motivation, accountability, or like an actual plan. A lot of people will say something along the lines of like, well, I just don't know what to do. Like, I don't know which one to buy. I don't know whatever. And I'll say something like, well, 
Do you know something that you could be doing right now or something that you could buy right now that could help solve this problem? And they'll always say, well, yeah, of course. I mean, so it's not a lack of information then. What is it? And they're like, well, it's, maybe it's a lack of information, accountability, whatever. And they start giving you all these reasons why the things didn't work for them and what they actually need. So I always want to dig into this and I'll even go even further and say things like, how does that make you feel? 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 Like, great. Well, tell me more and then I'll go into the pleasure points. I want to establish this gap. Like, what, why do they actually want this thing? So they'll start telling me. I remember sitting at this table one time. I was with a guy in Vegas, and I just met him at this dinner. And this is how quickly this can work. It's at dinner, and he starts hearing about how we had a weight loss company for men, helping them get fit, build that confidence. And this guy actually didn't need to lose a lot of weight, but he saw the confidence of being healthy and, and having that discipline and having those routines. So I'm at the dinner table, and I just ask him, like, what do you want? And he starts telling me about the results that he wants. He wants to build muscle and all these things. And I start digging into why. So you already established the pain points and they start telling you, how, how does 60 pounds of weight, like if you continue doing what you're doing, what will life be like in a year? Well, they're like, well, I might be 80 pounds overweight. I'm like, how, did that, how would that make you feel? And how would that affect your life? And they start seeing the pain, right? And they're like, oh, like this is terrible. I want to fix this problem, but I don't know what to do. So next I go in pleasure. They start telling me, well, let's talk more about then where you actually want to be. What will life be like if you're there? Why do you want to be there? Because if you don't have a big desire, then you're probably not going to do the things. Even if I gave you the perfect plan, if you don't really care, why do it? And so, you know, they, I remember being with this guy in Vegas and this guy sitting there at the table. And it's one of those tables where you have the paper on the table and you can use a pen, you could write down on it. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, what do you want? And he's like, confidence. I'm like, great. Well, but, but if you had confidence, like, what would life be like? He starts telling me and we start like future pacing. We start, just, we start getting him to salivate over the life that he's going to have if he just had this thing. He's like, well, I'd probably be able to go out there and, and start a business. I'm like, okay, great. What else would confidence do? Like, what else would that power do, like the confidence in yourself? Well, I'd be able to get a girlfriend. Oh, okay, that's cool. Like, that, that's amazing. Let's, let's go with those things then. If you, had a, if you had a business, like what would life be like? It's like, well, and he said he can make more money and like all these things. I'm like, if you had a business, what could you do? And he started talking about, well, if I put myself out there, I know I'd be able to start a company. I'm like, what would that company do on the low end? He starts talking about dreaming about these hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like, That's amazing. If you had this girlfriend, what would life be like? It's like, man, dude, that'd be the most amazing thing ever. So now all of a sudden, it's not, I want to lose 60 pounds or I want to gain a little bit of muscle. Now we've inflicted pain where it's like, oh my gosh, I need to do something about this. If I keep doing this, I see the pain. This is a problem. This would be the equivalent of someone who had smoked cigarettes but didn't know the problem. And then all of a sudden, they have these symptoms, and you start asking them, like, how long have you been smoking? How long have you wanted to quit smoking? What have you done to start to quit smoking? If you keep smoking, what will life be like? And all of a sudden, they start telling you about how they're going to die. And they're like, oh, my gosh, this is freaking crazy. I need to get out of this pain. But I don't know what to do. Well, what do you want to do? What, what would life be like if you did quit smoking? You'd have this, 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 and this. And if you had that, what would life be like? And you continue to go down this rabbit trail. And then all of a sudden, it comes to the point where it's like, now you've done something, what I call is distinguishing the gap. Now you figured out where they want to be. You figured out where there are and, and where they are. And you've actually drilled down on those pain points where they're ready to run away from the life that they're at right now. You supplied the vision, something salivating enough for them to take action where no longer is it worth $10, $5, $50, $5,000, but you've salivated them to the point where they're at a pain where they'll pay whatever to get out of it, but also they have a desire, which are the two core desires, which is running away from pain or running towards pleasure, one of the two. Most people will run away from pain all day compared to running towards pleasure. People know they can be fit if they run, but if a bear chases them, they're going to run really quickly. I've had people tell me, man, I wish I could just have a bear chase me every single day because then I'd be in such great shape. So most people are going to run away from pain more than they're going to run towards pleasure, but we want to have both so we have something to look forward to because if people just get depressed in their pain, they're not going to feel like wanting to get out of it sometimes. They're just like in their own misery. So they have something to look forward to. We've established this gap and then you can ask them, do you want our help? And then you're the person who's now selling the bridge. This is where they're at. This is where they want to be. The bridge is the product or service that you currently have, and you can supply that now to them. So you've built that trust. You've built that connection together. You've pushed on those pain points. You've pushed on the pleasure points. You've used some of those questions that I just uh, supplied for you, which I believe are just so powerful in figuring out, like, what do they want? What would it be like if they had this? What's it worth to them so that they can actually go out there and help them? So one last tip is that I remember one friend told me, 
he was selling products for like three times more than I was and, and he, people were completely happy and I felt like I did more for the client. So I was like, man, I need to figure out what this guy does. And he would get this client after we talked about what I just said to tell them if they had a magic pill, like something that would just get this done right now and create that transformation for them, what would the pill be worth to them? Don't believe in magic pills, but if they just had this pill, what would it be worth to them? And people would say 10,000, 20,000, they'd empty the bank, whatever, like they just want that thing so bad. And they got the people to actually start dreaming and putting a number to what the value of this thing is for them, right? Because no matter what, even if you have someone who wants to grab something from you, if you can push on these things, like it's actually like coaching them, now they have this massive desire where they're gonna take action more on what you have. So establish the gap, sell the bridge, provide the great service or product that's gonna fulfill that need or that problem for the prospect, and all you have to do, and you're gonna to want to do, is ask the right questions. Again, if you like this video, let me know what you sell down below, and that way that I can answer your stuff contextually for you. So let me know down in the comments what you sell, and make sure to subscribe to this channel so you come back for more information on how you can have success without sacrifice.